Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 25th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Our focus right now is on the move class um, and executing the various different types of moves in a chess game. Um, okay, so let's just jump right into it. There's some sort of helper methods that I want to introduce here. Uh, public boolean is attack. That's going to return false on the base class. Public boolean is castling move. Return false and public piece get attack piece. And that's going to return uh, null. Right? Um, so. Okay, so let's, we know that we're going to have moves in collections, right? We know that, for example, in each one of our piece classes, we return a collection of moves. So we know that we're going to need a hash code and equals method. So let's just start by implementing those. Okay, so let's come up here at override public int hash code Let's start and at override public boolean equals final object other all right so following the same pattern that i had with pieces let's just say final int prime equals 31 int result is equal to 1, result is equal to prime times result plus this dot moved piece dot get piece position result is equal to prime times result plus this dot destination coordinate all of the constituents of the um, move and result is equal to prime times result plus this dot moved piece dot hash code and actually we don't need this one because yeah we don't need that one because that's going to be inside of the uh, moved pieces hash code right so then we can just say result and that's that for the hash code for the equals we're gonna say if this is equal to the other thing if they refer to the same thing then return true right if the other thing is not instance of a move we know we can quickly return false. Otherwise, we want to say final move, other move is equal to move. Other return this dot current coordinate. Uh, this dot turn get current coordinate. Is equal to other move dot current coordinate and oh, get destination coordinate is equal to other move dot get destination coordinate and get moved piece dot equals other move dot get move piece. Okay. And actually get current coordinates and move pieces get position so we don't actually need to do that one. There we go. So I think that's right. Okay. So right. <clears throat> 
So let's now move down to the attack move, okay? And let's see what's going to be different on there. Let's go to Mm, did I not have an attack move class? Yeah, we do. Okay, so... For this, we're going to say at override public boolean is attack is going to return true. And we're going to also override public uh, piece, get attacked piece, and we're going to return this dot attack piece. And Override public int hash code return this dot attacked piece hash code and oh I'm sorry plus super that is to say moves hash code super dot hash code and that override public boolean equals Final object other if this equals other again return true if the other's not an instance of an attack move return false and lastly, final attack move, attack, other attack move, right, same pattern, return super dot equals other attack move, and get attacked piece equals other attack move dot get attacked piece. I think that's right. We'll come back to it and see um, you know if I missed anything. Right, so right now we're just sort of um, building up the move class. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of work but it's not going to be too bad. Let's look at pawn jump. Okay, pawn jump Let's look at pawn jump. Pawn jump will be interesting, and I think this is will will be the last one we do in this video. Um, pawn jump actually. Let's do the execute for pawn jump. So this will be interesting. Public board execute. So this is going to look very similar to the execute method on move. Okay, but there's going to be a slight difference. So let's see what that is. Let's say final. Builder, uh, we want a board builder. Uh, builder is equal to new builder. And let's say for final piece, piece in this dot board dot current players active pieces, right? Let's say if not this dot moved piece equals the piece that we are iterating over then builder dot set piece piece and do one more for loop for final piece piece in this dot board dot current players opponent active pieces 
builder dot set piece piece and now this is the part that gets interesting final pawn moved pawn is equal to pawn this dot moved piece dot move it move the piece right we're gonna move it and we're gonna say builder dot set piece moved pawn and we're gonna say builder dot set on pass on this doesn't exist yet this method pawn to moved pawn builder dot set move maker this dot board dot current player dot get opponent dot alliance all that's the same and return builder dot build so in this video, this is probably the most <clears throat> interesting uh, piece uh, of the video, right? So what are we doing here? Well, first, let's introduce this method. Let's go into the, let's go here and say create the setter method. So now that exists. And we now have private, we're just going to say pawn on passant pawn. So what are we doing here? What we're doing is this. Let's go to Wikipedia and let's look at the en passant move. The en passant move happens when, right, so let's look at the example that they have. Here it's black's turn to move and black executes a pawn jump, right? So this was the initial board, black to move, he executes a pawn jump. Now white can capture from e5 to f6. He can capture the f5 pawn en passant, right? So all we're doing now is when a pawn jump occurs, right? If a pawn jump occurs, we're recording onto the newly created board that pawn as the en passant pawn, okay? So what's going to happen is um, in the pawns, uh, you know, calculate legal moves. Now remember the two dos. We didn't deal with en passant, and we didn't do deal with promotions. Here we can simply get the boards en passant piece, and if it's not null, then we know that the prior move was a pawn jump, and we can um, go ahead and. Uh, calculate whether or not we can execute a an en passant attack okay so hopefully that makes sense um, we'll, we'll definitely go through more of it uh, in a future video but here what we're all we're saying is we're recording this pawn jump as the en passant pawn uh, for the board if we don't record it then it's just by virtue of us not setting it it's going to be set to null in the board that we create and that's one of the benefits of having this sort of immutable board and um, you know every time we make a move we transition to a new board that's one of the benefits um, of doing this right so if you if you pay close attention you'll see that this execute method is very similar to the execute method on a plain old move the uh, only difference is just sort of setting this on pass on uh, okay so thanks for you guys' patience uh, we're, we're pretty far along here in the move class uh, when we finish all the stuff that we needed to do for move, we're going to jump right uh, into the GUI, and I think that'll be really exciting. Thanks, guys. See you soon.